Uh, we're gonna read uh, Reaper. I was a soldier. So, here we go. I was a soldier. Reaper. By Reaper6883. Chapter 1. Oh, there's multiple chapters. Yeah. Oh my god. I know. Alright. That's why I said not all of it. Chapter 1. Him? I've heard of him. It happened years ago. He was a true soldier. There was a soldier by the name of Stanley. He was a close friend of the stallion I sought for. Seven years ago was a war that engulfed this world. The War of the Damned. Or as most of you call it. World War Three. <laughs> yes! <laughs> this is great. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a My Little Pony fanfic, by the way, everyone. This, so, wait, this is a My Little Pony fanfiction? Yeah, this yes, is a My Little is. Pony fanfiction, everyone, so... Strap in, we're in for a ride. I was thinking this was like a friggin', like, Berserk fanfic or something. No, it's a... It's a let's World continue. War Three Berserk fanfic. Let's continue, everyone. Alright. Or as most of you call it, World War Three. <laughs> and in that war was a soldier who bravely fought through the battlefield and disappeared from this world since history. History? From this world's history? Okay. He was a lone wolf who fought with no, without fear nor hesitation. The story begins. It was a dark and cloudy day. August 16, 2016. 11.15 a.m. Sergeant Connor Reaper Sanders, Delta Force, Manhattan, New York. <laughs> War. It destroys everything it touches. It destroys anyone who is caught up in it physically, mentally, and emotionally. It messes with the minds of the people involved. It creates fear and death, hate and anger. But... What would happen were someone from war entered into a land of peace? Would fear take control? Would the soldier bring war and the harm with him? Would anything change at all? In a world of uncertainty, one can always fear. The name is Connor, Sergeant US Army 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta. I served in this unit for most of my life from a young, young age. I am still underage and by law I shouldn't even be in the army, but barely anyone knows. But barely anyone knows anyone who does know... Oh, this stuff is not great. Alright, so this is not punctuated correctly so it says here, but barely anyone knows anyone who does know is probably dead. I barely even talk much anymore after since the incident. Quotes, um, I fear what would happen if I were to tell any of my few surviving friends or any of my superiors. All my life, I have feared every second, every minute of it. War was the only thing I knew. My friends all went to serve a month after the war started, so I soon followed. After basic training, we were deployed into war. Within the first few weeks, most of the people I trained or grew up with died. After a month, many more followed. Now, I don't know if anyone I knew is alive. I don't know if I might ever make it home. Hell, I don't even have a home. The only thing keeping me going is have it. Wake up, drill, it and then go kill. That defines my life in a nutshell. Interrupted only by the death of a friend or going to the local battlefield hospital. It was like what George Payton said. May God have mercy upon my enemies because I won't. God, I wish that were me. Nothing personal, kid. Psst. Oh, beautiful. Nothing personal, kid. Oh, no. This is okay, so uh edgy. This is can so I, can edgy! We, can I interject really now, just quickly? 
Sanders. Sanders, wake up! My ears were making the deafening ringing sound. It slowly subsided. It took a while, but eventually I could hear clearly again. I was lying in the corner of a down block hawk's internal cargo hold. Both the pilots were dead, and only a few lucky survivors remained. Wires were hanging from the roof outside. I could hear multiple fully automatic gunshots, explosions, and shouts. American or invader alike. There were also sounds of screaming civilians and wailing sirens thanks to the evacuation that was still underway. Sanders! Get your sorry ass of this pile of shit! Oh, this is terrible. Sanders, get your sorry ass of this pile of shit! I snapped back to reality after hearing the distinct reggae accent of the Sergeant Major Tyrone, Cal Tyrone Calais. He, he has a reggae accent. I grabbed my custom Scar L with an ACOG side, a grenade launcher and multicam camo. I slowly looked up to analyze his features. He was the oldest person out of all of us despite him looking like he was on his mid-twenties. He wore combat overalls. Oh god. He wore combat... <laughs> he wore combat overalls in the woodland marpet camouflage, and on his torso was a black Kevlar vest with pouches for ammo and grenades. On his face, he wore a red bandana. Come on, yes, skeezer. Tyrone barked over the noise of gunfire. Yes, sir, I yelled back. I sprinted to the nearest piece of cover, which, <laughs> which was behind a burnt car that Tyrone was letting a few rounds loose behind. Sir, what are my orders? I shouted before being forced back by a nearby detonation from a grenade. To shut up and do as I said, he primed and chucked a grenade of his own, clearing out a group of rats. It wasn't the most specific set of orders I received, but orders are orders. I laid down suppressing fire, killing several soldiers with perfect, with perfect headshots. Perfect fucking headshots. Cussing blood and bits of brain to gush out. This is K for kids! <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, I'm done. Yeah.